to say that today's guest is controversial is an understatement, but the truth is Kelly Dodd is so much more than what was portrayed on The Real Housewives of Orange County. Kelly is a strong woman with strong opinions, which I love. We have that in common. She's a great mom, a loving wife who speaks her mind. Nowadays, you can't really say that about many people. We talked about her love story with Rick Leventhal, serious couple goals, her time on Housewives, and who she would choose to go with on an intimate, ultimate girls trip. Kelly Dodd Leventhal, thank you so much for joining us today on Misunderstood. I love that intro. Thank you. Oh, Isn't that a great song? I actually had them create that from the animals version of Misunderstood. And then I had some random person put a beat to it. I kind of love it. I do. I love it. That was so cute. Thank you. Um, so anyway, I want I wanted to say hello because we haven't officially seen each other since we met in New York City very randomly one night at dinner. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, it was like a really fun time getting to meet you. And everybody was saying that we look like twins. So I think that's funny. And every time I have a picture taken of me somewhere in the comments is, wow, you look just like Kelly Dodd. So I guess that too about you. <laughs> yeah. So it is, you know, an honor because you're so beautiful. I know. I feel the same way about you. Oh. Um, but when I met you, you were with, Jeff Lewis and Shane, and mm -hmm. you were with, was it your cousin? Who else were you with? I was with my couple? cousin and Rick. And Rick, of and, course. And, and her and her husband and, and Tara's husband. Right. And it's very funny because I enjoyed your company. Obviously, I'm friends with Jeff. I've known him for a while. I've been on his show. But it was funny because I listened to your podcast later when you were recapping, um, you know, your whole trip to New York. And uh, we were all going to maybe hang out again, or I was going to hang out with your your cousin. cousin yeah. And and um, you, well, Rick had mentioned that the husband was like, "There's no way I'm letting Rachel hang out because she's a madam." And I was just like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, where do people get this information?" Which is exactly why I have my podcast misunderstood because I think people, as you know, read so many things about you, and they're just. Not true. So to clarify to you and Rick, because that's really all I care about, I've never been a madam, nor will I ever be. So I would <laughs> I would love to be a madam. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd probably make good money because we know a lot of hot chicks, but yeah. besides that, no, I, I'm not uh someone you can't let around your wife or your husband. So, you know, yeah. I just wanted to clarify that. how people get really weirded out. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very strange. You know, when you have a persona and people have read about you, um, you know, it's hard. You have to really attack them one person as a, at a time and let them get to know you. Um, so it's been a difficult thing for me, as I'm sure it is for for you. Exactly. I like yeah. that. It's understood. Yeah. Um, so you were with Jeff Lewis and I just wanted to ask you a question about that because there's been like all sorts of drama in the news. I know you're friends with Jeff, but aren't you also friends with Heather McDonald? I am. So I am too. I think they're both great individually, but like, how do you feel like you have to take a side on this drama? It's so interesting that this podcast drama has become sort of a mainstream entertainment news thing, right? So how, how do you take sides on that? Or do you not at all? I, I don't take sides. I, I try not to, you know, um, there's just always, you just can't not, yeah. you know, not when you have friends, you can't take sides. And, and if somebody's like, oh, take my side or else, you know, uh, I think that's immature. Yeah. But so you're, you have no problem going on Jeff's show because you and Rick were just on Jeff's show. And then I assume you'll have no problem going on Heather's show. I don't know. Heather has never had me on her show. Oh, she had, is that? Her show. she had me on her show, uh, what, 10 years ago. I don't know. Really? She doesn't, she's not interested. I don't know. Uh, Rick oh. asked she, Heather if we could be on at her show to promote his book, Chasing Catastrophes. And she was like, yeah, no, I, I only have comedians on. I think that she just um, 
doesn't want to ha- be political in any sort of way. And, you know, I, I think she feels like uncomfortable that way. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. So, right. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Well, so actually I want to get into that a little because, you know, in doing my research of you, you are someone who is quite controversial. I don't think that's a surprise to you. Um, and so I really wanted to ask you, like, what are your feelings about that, that you, you know, are so outspoken? How does that feel to be outspoken? Um, you know, obviously that's gotten you in trouble, but it's, you're obviously saying how you feel. So what is that like? Well, I mean, it cost me my job, mm-hmm. cost me, you know, a bit, I was making quite a bit of money and, uh, I, you know, I feel like I have integrity. I, I don't regret it because, you know, I'm, I'm real and I'm authentic and, uh, I just, just wanted the best for our country. And, you know, I wanted, I, I hated the mandates. I hated the, you know, uh, the, 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 mask, the vaccines, all of that stuff. I wanted businesses to thrive. I wanted my daughter to go to school. I didn't want to have to have her to wear a mask all day long. I was very outspoken about that. And, you know, Bravo is woke and they were pushing, you know, the BLM thing. I wore a drunk wives matter hat and I didn't buy the hat. It was given to me at my wedding shower. It was a play on words. And they're like, you're mocking the BLM. And look now the BLM is, was full of crap. And, um, so I feel like in time, like Andy Cohen said that I was on the wrong side of history. I feel like I've been vindicated. I feel like, you know, that black lives matter was a bunch of BS, a bunch of con artists running that group. Um, you know, the, the, the vaccines, you know, didn't work mask didn't work. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm authentic. It feels good to be able to say and do what you want and, and not care where everybody on that show on housewives is scared. They're scared for their job. Well, it's interesting that you say that though, because I feel like so much of that show is based on controversy or kicking up something to talk about or argue about. So I would have thought that that was something that made you different. Um, you know, there are plenty of people that don't agree with you. There are plenty of people that do agree with you. So that's reality, right? right. I mean, but that's what it seems you, like to me. If you're a criminal, you can stay on that show. If you get arrested and you do things against the law, you can stay on that show. But if you have any, you know, any political differences, you know, it's like, it's that group as the tolerant group. It's the most intolerant group. So, you know, I mean, you know, I have, I have a lot of fans that support me, you know, I have um, a big following and it makes me feel good. You know, like I don't have to rely on Bravo and Bravo's paycheck to pay my bills. I, you know, we do it ourselves. Yeah. Well, I know you get interviewed so much about Bravo. I actually, my show is not about reality TV. So I, I will get to that in a second, just to ask you a few questions, but I really want to know more about like you, your ro- your road to there. Like what was teenage Kelly Dodd like? Were you outspoken? What did you want to be for a living? Tell me about yourself. Uh, I went to St. Mary's High School. I was um, a cheerleader. Uh, I was the captain of cheerleading. I was homecoming queen. Uh, I was very, I was very, very popular. Uh, and I was very popular just not at my Catholic high school, but at the public high school. And I had a lot of cousins that went to different schools. So I was pretty well known around Scottsdale, Arizona, um, back then. Um, Mm -hmm. and I went to ASU, I was dating a professional football player, uh, athlete, went to play for the NFL. I hung out with, you know, all those guys. It was a big time, like back in the day, it was a Jetson Six where Dan Marley and, you know, I was friends with Tina Marley and we would just go out and have, you know, a good time. Like I was in that, that scene. Then I got married at 28 and moved to San Francisco and had a baby at 30. I had my daughter, Jolie, and I couldn't stand San Francisco anymore because of the politics. And it was just, was it my, was it my scene? Was it my jam? And so I moved to Newport Beach because Newport Beach is a lot like Scottsdale, but with better weather. So, and then I, I, 
I got a, I had a job in advertising. I was working for the Orange County Register because I worked at, um, in advertising in Arizona. And one of my bosses was the VP there. And so um, my ex-husband was a COO of Leapfrog Educational Toys and I wanted to work and I wanted to move there and he let me. And then when I moved, then I filed for divorce. So, and then I met Rick at Ramona's. <laughs> Well, before we get into Rick, because I want to ask all about that love story, but what, how did you even get involved in the housewives? How did you, how did they find out about you? Well, when I was, so I was engaged to this guy named Jeff and he was very, very wealthy and they called me and they said, Hey, do you want to, uh, interview for the housewives? And I had, a, you know, I knew Vicky because we have the same, uh, we go to Avaji and we'd have the same facialist. And so I would see her in there. So I knew, we knew each other. I lived in Newport. All those girls lived in Coda, which was far. So I, you know, we didn't really hang out in the same circles, but they asked me to interview and Jeff like kind of pushed me. Yes, do it, do it, do it. They told me I got the job. And when Michael, my ex said, no, you can't have Jolie, uh, beyond there they're like okay fine and they picked Lydia I think that was like like season nine I want to mm -hmm. say they picked Lydia over me at the last minute and then I got back together with Michael I, I dumped that guy I went back together with Michael they called me again and then they hired me wow okay and and Jolie was still off the table she she didn't she Once how I got old was she then? She's 17. She's a senior at high school. But at the time she was in third grade. Oh, she was little. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, and what was the interview process like? Uh God, it was um it was hard. Like it was so they wouldn't they interviewed you like four or five times. You had to go see uh, you know, they asked you about your 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 they wanted to see your house, they wanted to see your family dynamics. Um, they asked you a bunch of questions. Um, they did like some test stuff on you and then, and then, and then they offered you a contract. Right. And so were you excited about this? Like, what were you like? Eh, I don't really want to do it. Did you know what you were getting into? Well, my daughter really wanted me to do it. She pushed me. She was like, mommy, I want, you know, she was, she was into all that stuff when she was little. She was like, into like the Thunderdomes and like, like the Selena Gomez. And she was like, you know she was in acting and she wanted to, um, be on TV. Yeah. And so now she hates it, but mm -hmm. when she was little, she wanted to be, uh, you know, be a part of that. Um, wait, what was your question again? About what your, how it was getting into it and, and the interview process and, and if you yeah. wanted to do it. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, it was, and then I'm like, God, this would be fun. This will be, a fun thing to do. You get paid, you go, you know, travel all over, you know, there's perks. There's a lot of good, like great benefits by being on the show. There's a lot of bad ones, but there's yeah. a lot of good things, you know, uh, you so get to they, travel and you've had, mm -hmm. it's, it's a fun, it's a fun gig. Yeah. So they had called me, um, you know, in New York and I guess they were at their short list and, for whatever reason, my name came up and they asked me to be on it. They did a couple of interviews, asked me, like you're saying, to show pictures of my house and tell them about my business, my daughter, whatever. Um, and Leah got picked. This is for Housewives of New York. So I guess it ended up being between us and Leah got it. But Leah got it and she ruined the show, FYI. <laughs> they should have picked um, you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so anyway, um, but I, I, you know, it's interesting because when people heard later, I'm talking, you know, years later, that I was someone that they had consider, considered, I think page six ran something. And then, you know, of course, it got picked up everywhere. Um, the attention I got just for the notoriety that I might be someone on the housewives was crazy. People started sending me free stuff. People were contacting me. My followers rose by like 50,000 out of nowhere. So I want to know from you what that was like to go from like a regular person to all of a sudden being more fam famous than some Hollywood actors. I mean, bra the Bravo celebrity is such a big deal and people get really nuts about this. And also not only that, they think they know you, right? Exactly. So, oh, so yeah, talk to oh, me about God. that my friend don't don't I know you 
you know, it was really, really wild because like I, I was friends with Vicky and we would go to like Chicago. We would go to New York and the amount of people, when I first met her going on those airplanes, people got, she just stopped. Like she was like Michael Jackson. Yeah. And it was like, wow. Like, is this for real? Like people are, and then people are stopping me. It was a really weird thing to, to, to come by. Like, you know, people stopping you and Rick goes, God, I can't believe how famous you are like how many he's like i've been on tv for 35 years and this one show people stop you like crazy and they act like they know you and they'll be like oh my god you're my friend right or i recognize you by your voice i get that a lot or uh, you know you're prettier in person than you are on tv and i i get that constantly and i'm like it's it's just it's it's just weird it's weird um having people see and then you'll get like you know, I saw you at this restaurant, but I was too scared to say hi. And, you know, I'm just a regular person. I'm not like, mm-hmm. but yeah, having that fame right away was weird. Right. Um, now, did you go into it thinking you wanted to have a product or something you want to, wanted to sell? I mean, what was your impetus for going on it? I, well, I think my, my business for going on, it was um, really to, to leave Michael. Mm. I had a plan to set up. So get divorced. And it was, and it was giving you an income that it was wasn't based on a man. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's, I mean, that's the truth be told. Yeah. Well, that's a good reason, I guess. Um, yeah. and so, um, I heard on your podcast with, with Rick, you were talking recently actually about the fact that it cost you so much money to be on the show. I don't think a lot of people, might understand that it's like you guys are paying for your glam squad. You guys are paying for a lot of stuff, right? The only thing we, the glam squad is when we're doing those confessionals. That's the only Mm -hmm. time, but Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very, very costly to, to do this show. I mean, the clothes, you know how it is, the makeup, the products, the, I mean, even the parties, you know, it's even like, I was talking to Shannon when she was doing um, that, thing at my girlfriend's house at Huntington Beach. She's like, I had to put that, I had to pay for that, all that. She got right. all the decorations and they paid for the food evolution, but but she she had to put it out in her own money. You know, it's it's things like that that it's costly. Right. So and I don't think, you know, I, well, I found it interesting that you are somebody who really seemed to be the same person from the first season all the way through. There are so many people that start their first season and then by the second season have completely changed. Either they're getting facial reconstruction or they're all of a sudden their wardrobe is completely different. Um, you know, you really seem to be somebody who remained who you were throughout the entire time you were on that. Do you feel like that's true? I do. I feel like I'm the same. Yeah, I feel like I'm the same. I haven't, you know, most of them have all had <clears throat> base lifts and you know, uh, their hair is different. Like Gina Emily's has a facelift. Shannon looks like a completely different person. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Vicky has stayed kind of the same. I mean, I guess you know, she's had a lot of changes too. Uh, well, Vicky looks better actually. Yeah, I mean, but, not Vicky in a crazy looks, way. She looks, Vicky more looks pretty. better, but v- Vicky looks prettier now at yeah. 60 than she did in her, in her forties. Yeah, she really does. Yeah. Um, Okay. And I guess we have to talk about this for a second about this whole reality reckoning that's become, you know, popular for everyone to talk about. What are your thoughts on how you were treated? Um, Were you made to do certain things? Do you feel like uh, you were, you know, someone who was abused or forced to do anything on the set? What are your thoughts on the whole thing? I, I don't understand that thing that Bethany is doing because I can tell you right now, and, and trust me, I, I could be a total disgruntled employee because I was fired for my pol- for my politics. Okay. But I can tell you right now, they never told me to say anything. They never told me to drink. They never told me what to do. We were already drinkers to begin with. So they provided the alcohol for us, but they never said, Hey, get drunk, start drinking. I never experienced that in my life. Um, I, I don't understand do they encourage it? Like you have a good time? Yeah. But they never said, they never forced it down your throat. They never told you to drink. Yeah. And don't you think it's true? I mean, I haven't, I've been on two reality shows, nothing to the extreme that you've been on, but 
I know that everyone sort of makes the excuse, well, there's all this editing at the end and it's totally different. I don't find that to be true. I mean, I know who I am and I know how I act. You cannot make someone look completely the opposite of who they are. I mean, I take full responsibility for everything I do. And of course they can take things out of context, but if you act like an asshole or if you act like a drunk or sex craved person, they're not going to be able to edit that from someone who's very Christian and is completely straight laced. So hair thinning impacts a lot of us, me included. It's not only common, it's normal. That's why I joined the thousands of people who are doing something about it with Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, clinically shown to improve hair growth, visible thickness, and strength. And their physician formulated supplements use science backed ingredients. Men and women are different when it comes to thinning hair. It's no one size fits all. And Nutrafol takes that into account. It has unique formulas to provide exactly what the body and hair needs to grow based on biology, age, and other lifestyle factors. You ready to get started on the road to healthier hair? All you have to do is go to Nutrafol.com and take their hair health wellness quiz. Identify causes of your thinning hair and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health. I really love Nutrafol because if you know anything about me, you know, I'm kind of known for my hair and I've been wearing hair extensions for over 15 years. Nutrafol gives me the confidence to know that my hair is getting thicker and growing back and it just feels better. I feel better and I love what it's doing for me. So take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code UNDERSTOOD. Find out why 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code UNDERSTOOD. That's Nutrafol.com slash understood. Ever since my daughter started back at school, our schedules have been crazy. I try to make it a priority to cook us a great dinner, but sometimes I fall short. That's where HelloFresh comes to the rescue. It's farm fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to my doorstep. It saves me trips to the grocery store and saves me money because I always end up buying things we don't even need. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit for a reason. Their menu includes 40 recipes and over a hundred add-on items to choose from every week. And it's not just dinners. You can stock up, you can stock up on easy breakfast, lunches, and fresh snacks. All you have to do is shop the HelloFresh market and add it to your weekly box. It's that easy. I've also used Green Chef in the past, which now is owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands, and now my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 understood, and we use the code 50 understood for 50% off plus 15% off for the next two months. That's 50 understood is the promo code, the number five zero not spelled out. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 understood and use code 50 understood for 50% off plus 15% off for the next two months. HelloFresh. It's America's number one meal kit. Yes, um, but they can edit you in a good way. For instance, Gina Kirchenheyer. She was a drunk. She was a mess. They didn't even show half of the, half of the stuff, how she behaved. And they made her look good for years and years and years. They never edited that. Why they, do you think they did that? I don't know why they even like her. I, I find her so boring. I don't find her at all interesting. I I mean, I don't, I, she's cute. She's pretty, but her voice is like annoying. She's with the dud of a boyfriend. She, you know, she has six kids living in a two bedroom condo. I mean, there's nothing that I find interesting in that, that girl. And we, all of us used to say, how does she get a good edit? Yeah. It's like they, they, they keep like, it, you know, they came after Elizabeth. She came after Elizabeth Vargas. Sorry, yeah, they never put that in there. I mean, she's never had a party. She had, she's been on that show five years. She's never had a, she had one party in the five years. Like she offers nothing to that show. So in 
in that vein of conversation, like, what do you think about Bravo's casting job? I mean, I know that they try to pretend that you guys are friends to make it look authentic, especially with the fact that this new New York cast has come out and they did a whole new. I love that new New York cast. You do? Oh, yeah. I'm like obsessed. Awesome. Okay. Who's your favorite? I like um, Erin. Okay. She's my favorite. Yeah. And. And do you feel like it's true that they always have to have a villain? They always have to have a hero. They have to have somebody down the middle. Like, what are your thoughts on their casting? Uh, you know, I I don't know. I I I like I like it authentic. I like real relationships. I don't like this four step like on Orange County. I it, I find it to be fake and contrived, and I I don't like it. Um, you know, I think yeah. I mean. Like, I think they've gotten away from the housewives, you know, earlier days you saw the families and the kids and the parents, and it was more kind of wholesome Mm -hmm. and it was more about the families and like what's going on in the family dynamics. And now it's like fighting at lunch. Now it's like going into, it's the same formula, right? Yeah. Going fighting at lunch with the girls. Yeah. Yeah. I find it to be the same formula and I find it to be um, kind of boring to be Mm -hmm. quite honest. You know, it's like, do I have to sit through another lunch and watch them fight or an argument or because, you know, that's not how really it is. I mean, I don't fight with my girlfriends like that. No, of course not. Um, So do you feel like you made any real relationships on that show? I was really, really good friends with Shannon for a long time. Um, but we're trying to make amends. She was supposed to have lunch with her this week. And then, you know, obviously you heard about the DUI. Uh, I was, I, I'm, you know, Vicky and I were really good friends. We had a falling out. And then she called me when she got fired and we're, we are good friends. Um, I was really never good friends with, I mean, I liked Emily and I liked Gina, but we were never friends. Like they, they live, I just don't have really anything in common with them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they live far away. They don't, they don't travel like I do. They don't have the, like the clothes that I have. Like they don't have, they don't, it's like you and I, cause we have, we have similar tastes. We have a similar vibe. We have the same, you know, I don't have that yeah. with them. They're, that they're not my speed. Right. Um, Tamara, I was friendly with, and then we got in a fight. Um, I find her to be a different person. Uh, I, she's like Mr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. So I'm not friends with her anymore. I am good friends with Ramona. Uh, she's, you know, she's my speed. She's my type. That's it. That's, and that's all I'm friends with. Right. And she introduced you to your husband. She did. Right. So we'll get to that <laughs> in a second. And then I know that, you know, uh, we have to just bring up Shannon for a second. I know you've talked about your feelings on your Patreon. People can go there to listen to that, which is fine. But I just want to be clear, you guys, you and Shannon are trying to work out your differences. And I know in the past, you've said a lot of um, negative things about her. But right now, you are offering your support. You guys dropped off. You said a lot of negative her. things about me on Watch What Happens Live. So, right. Well, that's true. Yeah. 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 I mean, she came after me. Right. And, but, and came after me at BravoCon, trying to appease that woke mob. And mm-hmm. so, you know, she's done a lot to me and I'm just trying to defend myself here. Yeah, no, of, co- of course, I'm not criticizing you for that. But my point was, is that during this hard time she's having, there are a lot of people that could be jumping on the bandwagon saying, we expected this from her. We expected her to get into an accident. She was drinking too much. I haven't heard that from you guys. I've, I've heard you guys being up. Well, I'm time. just trying to give her grace at this time. I mean, Shannon is kind of like a broken bird. You know, she has a ton of remorse. She, I don't want to kick somebody when they're down and um I feel bad for her because she is a really good person and I know that she knows that her kids are disappointed in her and I think that's probably the worst thing you know it's embarrassing for her like my daughter is 17 and she's called me and she's like dude mom if you ever did that I would like disown you like you know and I was like oh my god but you you know I'm your mommy you know but right. she was like, that would be so embarrassing to me. And I know that 
her daughters are the same age as my my daughter. They're you know, and I I, I can only feel for for Shannon. People are like, well, well, she could have killed somebody, and she well, she didn't. Right. And I hate when people do that. I, she, she didn't she didn't kill anybody, right? You know? so, right. And and frankly, I mean, yes, there could have been a lot of a lot worse things that happened. Nothing bad did happen. Thank God. And, you know, hopefully this will be some sort of wake up call for her if she chooses and if she needs one. Um, But not only that, I think as you and I both know, when something that you do that's embarrassing or you make a bad decision, that's something that we live with anyways. And we have to deal with our family who's judging us for it or giving us a hard time. But then when the rest of the world is piling on and talking about it and making criticisms, making judgments, taking their things that they're triggered by out on you, it's even more difficult. So I can only imagine what she's going through in her head, feeling horrified, feeling embarrassed for her kids, whatever. And then listening to this other stuff you know, is like a lot and having paparazzi or whoever sitting outside of her house. It's just a lot. Um, and you make, everyone makes mistakes. It's 10 times, and you know, it's 10 times harder when the media and everybody's coming after you than what you think it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, really hard. It's really hurtful. And it's, it's a tough thing. You have to have a really thick skin or you have a nervous breakdown, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's move on. You talked about your daughter, Jolie. What does she think about you being so controversial? Um, no, she doesn't say anything like she, she, she's, she's happy that I'm off that show. She didn't she want okay. end, Yeah. At the end, she didn't want to film. She didn't like the fact that she was how to be there at this thing. And she wasn't getting paid. And my daughter right. she's a hustler. She works at a restaurant and she likes making money. And she's like, I'm doing this job and I'm not getting paid. She's like, I'm, what am I doing this for? You know, she, at the end, she was like, I don't want to do this. Right. I don't like being on camera. I don't like not working for free. I don't like it. And speaking about the end for a second, I mean, I know that you sort of brought this on yourself, but were you sort of devastated or regretful because I know you were making such a big paycheck and that was your living at the time or most of it uh, and your financial freedom. Did you feel sort of depressed after that? Or did you feel I like did. you had made a mistake? I went into a big depression. I yeah. did. And you know, Vicky reached out to me and Tamara reached out to me. And they that was really nice when I got fired because they they were saying the same thing. They fell into a great depression. I think when you, you know, when you're making that kind of money and all of a sudden it stops it's like, oh shit, maybe I should have kept my mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Um, okay. So speaking of Jolie, I wanted to, cause I have an 11 year old daughter and you know, the whole process of dating, I went and you married Rick and you guys co-mingled families. I was curious to get into like how, first of all, were you ever on a dating site? How did you date before Rick? Like what was Um, your process of meeting men? I never went on a dating site, but I've had two of my girlfriends that were on Hinge that ended up marrying doctors and getting married and have babies. Like it's, I, but I never was on, um, on a, on a website. I know, uh, what's her name? Patty Singer tried to get me on hers Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm not doing that. I, I, I wasn't opposed to it. It was just, I think when I was single, I liked being single. I mm-hmm. liked like dating. I didn't have like issues going on dates because there's so many men in, in, in Newport beach. So, right. um, I so were there certain things that you looked for? Were there red flags that you would stay away from? Like, give us some dating tips. I didn't you. like dating guys that had little kids. I, I found that very, very, I don't, I don't like little kids. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Because you're like, you're, you're not the mom. It's a really tough time, right? Because yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'll discipline my own kid, but if some little kid's acting like a brat and I, I don't know what, you know, what to do, then I'm not the mom. I just don't like dating men that have little children. Okay. So that was a deal breaker. Oh, that's a deal breaker. Um, somebody was out of work is a deal breaker. Got to have a job. Uh, you have to be, but did they have to be like a doctor, a lawyer? Like, would you date someone? Well, who I like- was, I was, my first husband was a lawyer. My second husband was a CEO of leapfrog, you know, 
And then the boy got the guy that I dated was a plastic surgeon, but I kind of, he was my friend and I was going out with these young, hot guys before. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try an ugly fat dude. See how that works. And it turned out to be awful. Uh, but I also like, you know, did he have a good personality? That had a good personality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That can only last so long, I guess. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, there's just no attraction. You got to, I got to be attracted to somebody. I can't. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I was going on dates with all these guys and they had, like, you know, this. I was like, no, you know, it was okay. like, yeah. Okay. So, how did you meet Rick? First of all, how long before this were you single? Um, I was, let's see, I was single for, I want to say a year and a half, almost two years. I was single. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I dated guys. I was on, you know, I had, I had like side pieces and placeholders and things like that. Um, but nobody like really that I was like into, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I was, I was dating that plastic surgeon and I was like, oh, forget him. And then I went to, I was on the gay pride parade with Andy Cohen set up. I went to that with Tinsley and Luann and Sonia and uh, that whole group. And I was like, you know what? I don't have any reason to go back to Newport because, you know, Julie was, uh, was in camp at the time. So I'm like, I'm, Ramona said, hey, stay with me. We have all these things planned in the Hamptons for the summer, all these parties. It's going to be single men there. Why don't you come? And I'm like, okay. So I ended up staying with her. Uh, she was dating this guy named Ron Duguay. They were friends or whatever. And then Ron Duguay was friends with Rick. And Rick had a summer party. And I went to Rick's summer party. And that's where Ramona and I, and uh, that's where I met Rick. And and was it love at first sight? What Tell me it was everything. Love at first sight. Love at first sight. And then, it was? Yeah. It was like, we, I gave him, gave him a kiss. And then he was reaching out to me on Instagram and my DMs. And then he asked me for my phone number. And then I said, I'm going to London. And he goes, well, I'll meet you in London. So our first date was in London. It was really, really romantic. So did you know who he was before you guys got together? Had you seen him on the news? No. Mm -hmm. so he was just Rick to you. It, it was, wasn't it was just Rick. Yeah. Worked at Fox News. Yeah. Okay. I, no, I didn't and know. then. And then how did that progress? First of all, how many kids does he have? He has a 33-year-old daughter and a 27-year-old daughter. Okay, so older. So it didn't take much. It wasn't like integrating young kids together. You're right, right. And and they were very, um, they were Housewives fans. So they were, you know, when they were like, oh, mom, you're like, dad, dad, date her, date her. So, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that's always helpful, I guess. <laughs> so, and then how long did you guys date? It was very short, right? Before you guys got engaged? We dated a year, right? Before we got engaged. Yeah. Okay. And how did he propose? Uh, he, he had an apartment and he had a big balcony and he, well, we went to Atlanta Jewelers and he's like, what kind of rings do you like? I'm shopping for rings. And I pointed out what kind of I like, because I've always had rounds and I'm I'm like, I love that ring. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he, would you have like flowers? And he had champagne. Um, he had Dom and, right? And like a cheese board and music. And he got on his knee um, outside. We had it really romantic up by a fire pit. And he proposed to me right there. And he said, so I want to meet you on 10 10 2020. Oh, I love that. So did you guys, you guys lived in different places? Like I lived you were in, in California. Beach, California. He lived in New York City. And how did you make that work? Well, he forced himself to move from New York because he was based in New York. He worked for Fox for 25 years. His contract was coming up. And they're like, well, we really don't need you in California. And so he's like, I don't care. I want to be with Kelly. And so they didn't renew his contract. Um, and now we're just doing our podcast and making things work about a house. Yeah. From an outside perspective, I will say it seems amazing because you two, the, the biggest thing I notice is that you guys have each other's back and yeah. that seems like it's so evident with you guys. It seems like you guys are really in love. 
Um, and I, I just, I really commend you guys because it's something to, for people to aspire to in relationships in general, but in second chance relationships or third chance, whatever it is, um, because it's something that you really want to have, especially later in life and to take you to the end. And I think that's so important, especially for what you've been through him, you know, leaving his job for you. I just think it's, it's amazing. And I really commend you guys because it's something well, that I hope to find. So and you, you guys are a great couple. You'll find it. Thank you. Um, okay. So I want to ask you a couple questions that only you, I think could answer. Um, let's see who, okay. We got to just do a couple of these. Who is the most overrated housewife? Uh, overrated housewife. Uh, I would say Sonia Morgan. Okay. Why? I just think that her, she's a one trick pony. She acts like a slut and she is, uh, she just seems so dirty to me. I, I, you know, I don't find her amusing at all. She, I, I just don't find, I, I, I don't find Sonia Morgan. I, I think she's a drunk. I find her to be disgusting. I think she looks like a pig to me. I don't know. I don't like her. So I take it. You're not going to be watching her new crappy show. league. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, who is the most underrated or the most misunderstood housewife? Oh, wait, overrated. What I would have to say, Gina Kirchenheyer. Sorry for the Orange, Orange County. I, I I don't get that, but okay, yeah, cool. Um, who's the most misunderstood in like a good way that you think that they should be doing better? Or people should like them more. I think Ramona. I think that's a good answer. People give her a really hard time. People give her a really hard time, but she's got such a great heart and she's so sweet and so nice. Yeah. Can she come off a little New Yorkish, you know, like, but she has a kind heart. She doesn't yeah. mean for, you know, for, she doesn't mean bad for anything. You know what I mean? I, I, she's misunderstood. I think. Okay. Good answer. Do you think Kyle is having a late in life lesbian moment? And would you ever do that? Um, I think. She's not having a lesbian moment. I, I I think that she invested in this woman, or this is what I heard from people that are close to her, that she, you know, um, sponsored this girl. They became really good friends. But I don't think that she is a lesbian. I I don't think so. Okay. I um, think if she, you could do it, go ahead. I think she's just doing it for publicity. Um, I don't I don't think she's a lesbian. Okay. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. Fall is finally here, and I cannot wait to do a little refresh on my wardrobe. My go-to, Jenny Kane. Jenny Kane is perfect for luxurious staples. The Cashmere Fisherman and the Cocoon are bestsellers every season, and it's easy to see why. No one does cashmere better. Jenny Kane is minimalist, it's refined, and more importantly, it makes fashion look effortless, even when it's not. If you love everyday basics, elevated, you need to check out Jenny Kane. From their cozy cashmere sweaters to their classic accessories, they never get it wrong. And that's because Jenny Kane believes in the art of simplicity. They focus on comfort, quality, and timeless design. This way, your clothes never go out of style. And not only are their clothes curated perfectly, Jenny Kane has also a flawless collection of home decor, chic furniture, cozy throws, candles, everything to set the mood perfectly for fall. They also have an incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase and joining is completely free. So check it out. And for a limited time, our listeners get 15% off their first order. Go to JennyKane.com and use the code understood to get 15% off. So I'm obsessed with Jenny Kane. I literally have not stopped wearing my sweater since I got it. I first experienced Jenny Kane while I was scrolling on Instagram and I be immediately became obsessed with the colors that just looked so buttery and warm and cozy. Now that I live in Florida, I was worried that these sweaters might be too heavy, but they're absolutely not. Every time I wear them, I get a compliment and I literally never want to take them off. I'm obsessed and I'm going to order more immediately. So Find your forever pieces at Jenny Kane. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use the code understood at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com promo code understood. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. 
Support for today's episode comes from OneSkin, founded by a team of four female longevity scientists with over 15 years of experience studying the biology of aging. I'm always on the hunt for the latest skincare products that keep my skin healthy and looking great. That's what led me to OneSkin. The beauty space is oversaturated with overhyped skincare products, but OneSkin stands out. They target the root cause of skin aging to promote healthier skin from the inside out. Their flagship product, OS One Face, is clinically validated to improve firmness, fine lines, and overall tone and appearance. One skin can be used on its own or combined with your current faves. It's vegan, cruelty-free, fragrance-free, and it's got the skin-safe seal of approval, meaning it's suitable for even the most sensitive of skins. For a limited time, our listeners can get 15% off of OneSkin with our code understood at oneskin.co. That's oneskin.co. So I basically just started the OS One Face and I love the way it makes me feel. I've been using it on my face, my neck, my chest, my and the back of my hands. I'm really excited to see what, you know, how this ends up turning out for me because I keep looking at the review, reviews and people are saying things like, I will not change and go back to anything else. I love this product. This is my favorite. I noticed visible differences. So for me, I just started it, but I'm so excited to see how my skin changes. Um, I, I love the way it makes me feel. I do, you know, I can't say that I noticed a difference yet, but I will say I love the way that it sits on my skin um, and the way that I look after I apply it. So One Skin is the world's first longevity company. One Skin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging so skin behaves feels, and appears younger. It's time to get started with your new fave face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with the code understood at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code understood. We only have one body, one skin, and only you can choose to make it better. Age healthy with one skin. Um, If you could do the ultimate girls trip, where would it be and who would be five girls you would want to do the show with? Um, I would would love to do it in Hong Kong because I live in Hong Kong. So mm-hmm. I would love to take everybody to Hong Kong. I would go with Ramona. Uh, I love Kyle Richards. Uh, I love um, Shannon Bedore. She's a fun, she's fun. Uh, I love um, Kenya Moore. And Leanne Lockin. Okay. Um, wait, and that is something you've mentioned before that you lived overseas. What were you doing overseas? Michael, my my ex, he was the he was running the the company over there. Mm-hmm. How long were you there? Uh, I was well, I was there for like a year, but on and off, like for six months at a, a stint for a good seven years. So I know it what's really. It, yeah, what's it like to live in a country like that? I loved it. You did. Well, absolutely loved it. It was like the best time of my life. It's just life wow. was so easy over there. Wow. Okay. I love that. Um, okay. What's your favorite binge right now? Show. Oh, I, love, I like Dorinda too. Dorinda's okay. a good time. Oh, and Teresa Judice. She's a great time. Okay. That's who I would, because I'm really friends with them in real life. Dorinda. And yeah. And she's, she's a good time. And so is Teresa Judice. Okay. Um, Okay, so your favorite binge on TV right now? It doesn't have to be reality, like Netflix or whatever. What's our favorite binge? What did we just binge watch? I'm sorry. What did we just binge watch? Um, shit. Well, you watched that show, the Dear Child one. Oh yeah, it's Dear Child. I just binged that. Is that the one that's um Any? about what? It's a, it's, it's on Netflix. It's called Dear Child. It's a German it's, film. Yeah, I just watched that too. I was like, I pins and needles on that. I binged on that too. Now, I, I just want to stop and say this for one second. I found that fascinating, disgusting, weird. I just interviewed the lawyer for Joseph Fritzl. Do you remember him? He was no. the guy from Austria who um, had seven children and put one of his daughters in the basement for 24 years and had seven children with her. 
So it reminded me of this whole crazy Ew. scenario. Yeah, crazy. But that was a crazy, that was an amazing, I love those German or, you I know. I do too. Uh, I, yeah. I love those. Like I'm now, you know, with all this strike and everything, I'm getting into like, I'm watching all kinds of different films from all different kinds of Korean films. I'm like, yeah. I'm into like international stuff now. Yeah, that is a really good one. I'm really obsessed on Netflix, by the way, with Love is Blind. I really wish that they would do one for like, I'm not a senior, but seniors compared to what those people are, because they're all in their 20s. People that have been divorced, have kids. I think it'd be so fun. I'm obsessed I'll with I'll watch that. that. Love is Blind yeah. on Netflix? Yeah you've, ne yeah, you've never seen it? No. I oh, you guys it. are going to love it. You did? I saw the first episode. I'll watch it with you. Oh, you'll watch it with me? Yeah. Rick said it's he's good. hot. <laughs> um, okay, so your favorite reality show, what would that be? My favorite reality show... Uh, what's my favorite reality show? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you like New York. I like New York Housewives. I like you the don't. reboot. Oh, I love um uh Hollywood House Flip. Oh, okay. It. Yeah, that is a good, good one. I like that. Yeah. I've always liked his shows. Um, you take a lot of vacations that I'm always obsessed with seeing, and I love that you're always traveling with like Heather and all them. What is your best vacation spot that people should go to? My best vacation spot, I love the Amalfi Coast and I love Croatia. Okay. Um, best celebrity oh, Greece encounter. Too. Greece? Yeah. Okay. Greece, yeah. Best celebrity encounter. Uh, best celebrity encounter. Well, I ran into Pamela Anderson in St. Bart's. That was kind of neat to see her because she just came out with that documentary. Oh yeah. Did you talk and, to her? No, I didn't talk to her, but I, I was just, I just like was, she was sitting like right there, but I was just looking at her. I thought she was so pretty. Um, that was, I thought that I, I found it fascinating because, you know, just got watched, done watching that documentary and then she was right there. Mm. But who, who's, what celebrity encounter, but I would say. Who, what? So celebrity encounter that I. I don't know. I, I I know so many. Well, well, that's a good one. Okay, this is kind of similar. Has anyone famous slid into your DMs and asked you out? <laughs> no. If you could say it in front of Rick. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Have you ever slid into someone famous DM? No. Okay. Sure, um, <laughs> has Rick since he's sitting there? Have you ever slid into someone's no, DM? I have. Okay. Okay. No, um, years, but that's because we were already talking to each other. Okay. Nice. Okay. Uh, what is your biggest regret? Uh, selling my house on the beach. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of which, incidentally, um, how did you get into selling houses and flipping them? I know you do that. Um. How did I get into it? Yeah. Like what made you like it? I, I just like um, finding like a piece of crap and making it pretty. I think mm -hmm. I find it so rewarding and I, I just, I, I just love it. It's like, it's something that I have a passion for. And, and oh, you guys are still doing that, right? Uh, yeah. We're, we're going to sell his house in the Hamptons and buy something in, in Newport and uh, fix it up. Amazing. Okay. I feel like you always have some good side hustle not that i would call it a side hustle but a way to like keep yourself occupied have a living have some money coming in yeah. yeah okay yeah. um yeah. i think that's important i like it's fun um okay so you do a podcast now um the rick and kelly show daily smash tell us about that so i do i have a, a patreon the rick and kelly show on patreon which is a paid wall and then the daily smash is on youtube monday through friday and oh, it's five days a week five days a week 30 minutes but uh, it's it's fun. We like it. You know, I just, I love having this platform where I can say whatever I want. I don't have to be censored or I don't, you know, like being on the housewives, I couldn't say anything. I was getting fined constantly and just having your own thing is just so rewarding. And I, I love working with Rick. It's mm -hmm. so much fun. And, you know, I always found that like when I was in advertising, when, you know, I loved my job and I was the number one salesperson, 
at the Arizona Republic and it, I loved it. I just love it. And I feel like if you do something that you love to do, you'll be successful at it. So uh, I, I just, I just love having the freedom and to just say whatever we want. It's nice. And tell people what the difference is. I mean, it seems like you give a lot more of your insight on the housewives and stuff in your Patreon. And then in your daily show, you're talking about things that you guys have been doing, um, you know, the daily news. Is that correct? Yeah. So like on the on the YouTube, we just talk about, you know, like Jeff Lewis does, you know, we talk mm -hmm. about our life, our experiences, what we're doing from day to day the restaurants that we ate at, you know, the experiences on vacations that we've done. We do daily vlogs. Um, we talk about stuff in the news, mm -hmm. uh, gossip on, you know, what's going on with people. So yeah. I, okay. Um, yeah. And it's super fun to listen to. It's like a quick listen. Um, it's great. You guys usually recap things that are about yourself. So I think it gives people a lot of insight into you guys, to your relationship, to where you are, what you're doing which I think is cool. Um, so I know Rick has a book out. Will you tell me a little bit about what he's doing? It is called Chasing Catastrophes, 35 Years for Covering Wars, Hurricanes, and Terror Attacks, and, terror attacks and Other Breaking News. Oh, and, wow. And at the end, it's all about me. <laughs> How he found you and it changed How his life. Found me, my, his love story to me. Or his, big, or his biggest catastrophe. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I would love for him to um do like stuff that you know like a book like the gossip like at Fox News like with everybody like banging each other I th th those kinds of stories are, are good I like reading that kind of stuff right have you read his book uh-huh yeah it's all right good. Good. so it's and a good it's book. Yeah. audio too so if you know you're in the car or whatever you can you know listen to or on the airplane it's on audio too Awesome. I'm going to get the book, Rick, because I used to work at Bloomberg News for many years. I love news. Um, so I would find that um, fascinating. I'm obsessed with the news. And it's um, not really, it's not really, it's, it's about things that happen. Like it's not like political or anything like that. So, you know, it's things he covered while he behind was the scenes of, of what goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Um, okay. Would you ever go back onto a housewife show if they asked you? I would really like to do a, an ultimate girls trip. I would really, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's a week long. You, you, you'd have fun. Vicky says it's the best. You get yeah. paid very, very well. And, you know, you don't have to, it, and it's like, you, you get in, you know, involved, invested with all these girls that, you know, are on the housewives. I, you know, I, I, I would love to do one of those. Okay. And well, I, hopefully. I, told, I told him Andy Cohen that he should do one that with women that have been to jail. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. That would be really controversial. Because uh, 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 I think Us Weekly or one of those came out with people who've been, you know, to jail. Incarcerated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. I think that would be so fun. All right. What is on your bucket list for the future? Do you want to write a book? What Tell us what, where you want to be in five years. Uh, I would love to write a cookbook of like my family recipes. You know, my mom and dad are such great cooks and I love to cook and I would love to do a cookbook. Um, people ask me to do a cookbook. I think that would be really fun, uh, to do a cookbook. Um, my bucket list would be to have a house on the beach again, just on the water. Even a condo would be nice. Mm -hmm. I would love that. And I would love to have like a, like a show, like a daily show, like on Newsmax of the Rick and Kelly show, kind of like a Regis and Kelly kind of thing. That would be, yeah. I would love to do something like that. Yeah. With audience and stuff like that. I'm sure people would love that. That sounds great. All right. Where can people find you guys? Tell us your socials and how to find you on uh, um, Patreon. I'm Kelly D. Dodd at Instagram and Rick is Rick Leventhal on Instagram and um, Patreon.com, The Rick and Kelly Show, and uh, YouTube, The Daily Smash, Sorry. The Rick and Kelly Show, The Daily Smash. Awesome. Well, thank you so much you. for joining us. I thank think you. you're great. I wish you the best. Um, I wish wild. Rick the best. And when you guys are in Palm Beach, we're going to go to dinner. We're going to go to dinner. I'll take you out. All right, thank you. Dan.
Thank you so much for listening to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a five-star rating and review. You can support the show by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. Do you have ideas for the show or want to reach out? Email us at info misunderstood podcast at gmail.com. That's spelled M-I-S-S understood. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Misunderstood.